Happy, happy, happy Monday, folks. This is the post game reaction of week one. I am Miguel Mike Medina. This is my partner, Avery Jones. Avery, week one is in the books. How do you feel about week one? Week one was very good. There were a lot of great games. I understand week one, you know, schools are getting that tune up game, if you will before conference play starts, but there were some very interesting matchups this week, and I was glad to see them all. And there were a lot of blowouts, too. <laughs> a lot of domination, and um, and one of them we're going to talk about right here in this video of college football time with Avery Miguel, but let's get things started on um, the Fighting Irish, Notre Dame. They took care of business. They beat Texas A&M 23-13. Their defense was impeccable, especially their pass defense, which they held Texas A&M to, I believe, 100 or less than 100. So they were sensational. That defense was phenomenal. Um, their offense didn't pick up until the second half of the game, but um, great victory by Notre Dame. I'm happy for them. And now they're off to week two. So what do you make of this game? I think their game at College Station against Texas A&M was a very good start for them. I think Coach Freeman uh, prepared his players well. Uh, the Fighting Irish defense was, I think, phenomenal. And you're right. It was a slow start, actually, for both teams in the first half. But once the second half started, the Fighting Irish picked up the pace. They took care of it. Defense made sure to make the necessary stops. And the Fighting Irish kind of went away with it, uh, winning by 10, 23 to 13. And they're they're there to make a statement. And as the higher seed, it it was it was their expected uh, uh win, if you will. But I like that Texas A&M were were giving them a fight, if you will, during the first half. But you know, like I've I've said before, you got to play four quarters, just not two or three and a half. Clemson, Georgia, the number one ranked team, Georgia. What in the world happened to Clemson? This team did not look like they were ready to show up to play. Three points, three points, and they lost by 31, 34 to three. Georgia looked like they didn't even break a sweat. This was um, a clinic. This was an annihilation. It was it was bad. It was bad for Clemson. A lot of credit to Georgia Bulldogs. They're ranked number one for a reason. This team hasn't missed the beat. They're clearly sending a message that they're in it to win it. They're here. And what a way to make a statement in week one. But if you're Clemson, that was horrific. Horrific. You don't show up like that against the number one ranked correct. team like Georgia. You are absolutely correct. Not only are you making a statement in Atlanta of all places, but you are the number one team and you are expected to have those wins. And not only that, it's almost like, again, in the first half, Clemson was keeping pace with Georgia. It was only 6 nothing going into the second half. So if you were, were a Clemson fan, you're like, okay, we're holding on. Let the second half uh, come in. Let the Clemson offense take care of business. And that didn't happen. Clemson was only held to 188 yards. And Georgia, once they started get the ball moving, it was lights out. And once Georgia kept scoring, they just kept scoring and scoring and scoring. And the Georgia defense also did their job as well. If I was Coach Dabo Sweeney, I would look at this film and take a look at what needs to be changed or what needs to be fixed, or what actually like completely blew out their game plan. Whatever their game plan was, I don't know what happened because I expected Clemson to at least keep it close. And going into the first and going into this the start of the third quarter for the second half, I thought Clemson had it because they had those chances. But once Georgia scored that first touchdown, it was almost like the air got stuck out of him. And Clemson quarterback, Cade Kubnick, it's like he he couldn't get anything going on. 
So Coach Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson offense and that Clemson defense as well, they need to take a look at what they need to work on and what needs to change because that was horrific. They are an ACC powerhouse. They need to get it together if they hope to make the playoff knowing that the playoff system has changed. And like I said in our preview, Georgia being the number one seed, it's championship or bust for them. No matter what team they play, they are expected to either blow them out significantly or they're going to win by a definite margin. Georgia wants to prove that, no pun intended, they are the big dogs of college football. And they certainly proved that and on Saturday. It was just unbelievable. Now, Avery, there were a lot of games being played in week one. In your opinion, what game, or I should say what team, deliver the biggest win of week one? Or what team surprised you that won in week one? Believe it or not, the game last night between USC and LSU, it was a good game. I think USC surprised me by beating LSU. Granted, they were on neutral ground. They played in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. But USC held on and pulled out a last-second win. And if you saw Brian Kelly's post-game interview, that, that's a clincher that Brian Kelly was absolutely upset with his team. They had control of that game. But USC... Now being in a different conference, they have to assert themselves as being a team that you cannot just come in or think because you're now playing us that you're just going to roll over us as well. So uh, the the biggest surprise I, I say is USC beating LSU last night. Uh, I think USC definitely deserved that win. They kept playing for 60 minutes all four quarters and they pulled out a victory. That's a good option. Um, For me, I would have to say Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, their comeback victory over Virginia Tech was flat out amazing. It was dr dramatic. Um, They ended up winning in overtime, 34 to 27. Vanderbilt is one of those programs that are mostly known for success in college baseball. Well, it's been a couple of years now, but um, they're more successful college baseball and football um hopefully they find some success in the future they are one of those teams that are that are on my list that i want to see them succeed in college football in the future so right now we're seeing you know georgia um ohio state michigan the list goes on and on Penn but in the state, future i would like Alabama. to see different teams um compete like yes. vanderbilt um army at some point i always respected um oh. their history if, so if I may. hopefully we see some different competition in the future. Yes. And, and it's interesting you mentioned Army, the service school. I actually had this thought yesterday. As far as the service schools go, and I'm going to say Navy, Army, and Air Force in that order. Navy played a great game Saturday. Navy played an absolute great game on Saturday. Look for these service schools when needed to play these awesome games against teams that think that, oh, we're just going to play a service school. This will be an easy win. No. I like to think of the service schools now like Appalachian State. You may not be familiar with their game, but whoa, if you have them on your schedule, you better come prepared because do not, do not bypass the fact that you are playing a service school. For the past, I would say, 10 years, the service schools have been putting out these very, very great games, having these very great seasons. And the players, these are players that are serving our country. So not only in that respect, respect for the schools in general. So definitely, definitely, definitely do not bypass a service school. Navy played a great game on Saturday and look for Army and Air Force to, to get in the thick of it this season.